we are here at Moa Cedar in Lancaster, California, um, the third iteration of Perceive Me. It started off at Cal State Los Angeles, then went to Studio Channel Islands in Camarillo. It's here at Moa, and then it'll be traveling after this. I am excited to be back in Lancaster. I grew up here. I, my dad was stationed at Edwards Air Force Base from the time I was like two until um, my parents got divorced when I was 11, then we went to Palmdale, and then Lancaster. I graduated from Antelope Valley High School and also Antelope Valley College. I taught at Antelope Valley College. I worked at Antelope Valley Hospital. I mean, I was immersed in the city, <laughs> you know, I lived here. I actually worked at the Museum of Art and History for two weeks. <laughs> this was like, you know, when they were on Sierra Highway a long time ago. Um, you know, I, I knew a lot of people I was involved, and so it's really exciting, you know, to be back in this, you know, in this, my hometown, in this place where I grew up. And I felt it was important to bring Perceive Me here. Andy Caminoni has done amazing work with the museum in Lancaster and you know I come here for exhibitions all the time and I knew you know that they had this kind of experimental art space cedar I've shown here I mean like 25 years ago I actually you know was in a group show here it hasn't changed that much and so you know, I thought this is the perfect place, you know, for Perceive Me to come. It feels really special to be back here. And, you know, I feel it's an important part of my life, an important part of my history. You know, it's also one of the other reasons I wanted to come here is because Lancaster, the Antelope Valley, is pretty conservative. That's where this is needed the most, you know, to talk about this and like get it in your face. And it, I feel like it's my responsibility to talk about these things but do I have permission? Like not, you know, not the legal permission, but from the community. Is that what they want? Is that what they need? Um, I've heard in the past, you know, like when it was at Camarillo, there were a lot of like gasps <laughs> and, you know, a lot of people coming back to see it again. A lot of like people bringing their daughters and their kids and, you know, things like that. And so, you know, I hope that's happening here also. But putting it out there is the most important thing and talking about it, it'll touch who it's gonna touch. You know, I hope that people come and see the work and just think about their own identity. You know, think about their own body image. Think about um, their own mental health, their own anxieties, their, you know, and maybe walk away with a new appreciation for who they are, a new love of who they are, no matter what their body type. And I have found that that seems, you know, from the people that I've heard from at the different exhibitions, that seems to be the case. You know, I hope that people walk away and they still talk about it, you know, at the dinner table or, you know, later on, like I, and tell other people about it. Like I saw this exhibition that, you know, is really powerful and important to who we are, to identity. Yes, there's a lot of nude pictures in it, but, you know, I hope people can get past the nudity and see the whole concept, you know, and see the joy in it. You know, of course I'm placing work next to each other that may have been in different rooms at the other spaces. And so I did set up new conversations between the pieces. Um, the center room again, you know, I made it more fun, more colorful. That's BAM, that's the first thing that people are gonna see. And hopefully they'll, you know, that, that may set the tone for what they experience in each space. <laughs> the other room is, I feel is a little more intimate because of like Debbie's big sculpture in the center. So it kind of like cuts the room in half. You have to walk around it and experience the works closer. You know, you actually have to get up close to the work. And so I feel like having the exhibition here, it does make you want to get closer to the work. I didn't know if it would fit. <laughs> I mean, there's 57 artists showing in this exhibition now. 80 pieces of art. It was like a jigsaw puzzle. And you know, the installation team was fantastic. And 
I'm really, really happy with the curation, with how I laid it out, how the works speak to each other. It's a small space, it's more intimate than Cal State LA and even Studio Channel Islands. It's different, and I think that's important. Um, several people have seen all three iterations, and they said they're all, they all have a different feeling. We started laying things out, and after that, everything kind of fell into place. I was able to get my salon style wall in the other room, and I'm looking forward to doing salon style in different, the next iterations as they come, because I think it's just, you know, you're standing there immersed in many of these portraits of me, of, of the message, of, of the vulnerability of all of that. And so I think that it's just like this powerful message that you see. I still, when I look at the work, I'm still kind of removed from it. You know, I still get people asking me, you know, how I feel when I look at it, when I'm surrounded by it. I feel like I need to like, bring a pillow or something and sit on the floor and just meditate with it and see what happens.